Hello everyone. I hope you are doing very well today. It's a good summer time. Hope you are enjoying. In this lecture, I would be discussing about some basic concepts uh, for programming languages. Um, it's a famous quote written uh, by Carnegie and Ritchie. Uh, the only way to learn a new programming language is by writing programs in it. I think it's self-evident why they say so. Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting um, phrase. Like we learn new languages until or unless we don't practice it, we forget in the same way. In order to learn a programming language, we need to practice it. So what uh, why do we need programming languages or what does it mean by programming uh, you know so some basic concepts uh, we, we discussed uh, about uh, different levels of abstractions uh, the basic introduction to abstraction when in, in our algorithm lecture series but just to to say here that uh, if uh, we need to write or we need to instruct computer to do certain task. Uh, we need to tell in a way so that it can understand. And as we know, computer understands the binary zero and one. Um, so that's the computer view of the information. But imagine uh, if we have to write instructions in zero and one, how difficult it would be. So scientists and engineers, they found uh, a way to, uh, to write the description uh, or what computer need to do in an easy to understand language. And then there are some programs which can translate that view of that, that instruction into a computer instruction. So briefly, uh, we can say there are three levels of uh, abstraction. One is machine language, or we can say the three levels of, uh, we can distinguish the languages. The second one is assembly language. And third one is high level language. So as, as we see in this example here, in terms of machine languages, it's a simple hex code uh, where um, C4 represents DEC means decrement by one, and uh, one represents where, which uh, where is the uh, value or data. So one says that it is stored in register one. And the second instruction, for example, this is just an example program to, to give some idea about what, what it is the machine language. Now seven is instruction of type B and Q, means uh, branch if not equal to zero. And where to branch? That is said by letter E, that PC minus two. Um, in assembly language, it's, it's a little higher level of abstraction uh, in a human readable form that DEC instruction R1 is the register 1, means decrement contents of register 1 by 1. Then the second B and Q loop means um, if the content of the register 1 are not equal to zero, then go back to the loop one and execute this, this step again. Now, third level of abstraction would be a higher level of uh, high level language. As we can see here, do means do this step R1 equal to R1 minus one, while this condition is true. So you see, we have, uh, so 
how the same information is being conveyed in different levels of abstraction. Now this is more familiar high level description. You might have seen a sample program. So it becomes more easy to code in this language, in the high level language, say C, C++ or Java or Swift or Objective-C, etc, etc. Now we can classify programming languages uh, mainly in two categories, imperative languages and declarative languages. Uh, imperative languages then further can be classified in terms of procedural languages say like like you write a simple procedure say C or Pascal and uh, write a step by step instruction. So basically you are telling in each step what is has to be done. Then another uh, classification we can say object oriented uh, means that uh, you associate information with objects and you define those objects. Um, those objects you can define via class or via structure. Defining via class has certain advantages compared to a structure where you can in, in class you can specify private or public members. So that gives uh, much flexibility and uh, there are different concepts of object oriented programming and object oriented methodology but uh, we're not going to discuss here that becomes uh, a separate topic. For now the second class major classification is declarative languages. Um, these for that can be specified uh, in functional languages and uh, logical languages, logic programming languages. In functional languages, your focus is to specify functions um, or what it has to be done instead of a detailed step-by-step -step execution. Uh, in terms of logic languages, you specify uh, the logic and the rest of the um, procedure how to, to do or how to execute that logic is inbuilt within the language. And other languages may uh, be classified like for example hardware description languages where you write a um, description of a digital logic in a form of language and then certain tools they take the uh, description written in high level language say VHDL or Verilog and convert it into a logic gate or the digital circuit. Now here an interesting question arises how to choose a programming language. That's a very difficult question to answer but in, in simple terms um, it depends on what kind of application we are targeting and uh, what expertise do we have or we want to build uh, what kind of expertise we want to build and some people look for the career options as well. For example, if somebody is writing program which is targeted for converting one language description to another language description say like cross compilers then it's much better to use the language which is as close to the machine as possible, say C language. Or if somebody is targeting, say, web development applications, um, then they may, they may learn or JavaScript, for example. Or if somebody is targeting to develop applications for social media platform, say Twitter or some other platforms, um, they may try Ruby on Rails. So it depends. It's not a straightforward answer which programming language to use. But it totally depends. Now if somebody wanna write a program for a robot to execute then Prolog or Lips uh, might be a better option. 
rather than uh, focusing on individual step we just focus on the logic and let the uh, language do its its job but there are disadvantages and advantages so very high level language it gives more flexibility for programmer but the finally generated uh, machine code would be maybe too big uh, too big in terms of byte size and so may not be that efficient but it depends on the application uh, where for example where we need more uh, functionality to be uh, implemented or our focus is more on to specifying say uh, the task to execute we don't care um, which method it takes to execute so it, to it totally differs uh, basic elements of any language would be say um, lexical elements uh, that is more concerned with what character sets are what uh, undefined symbols are uh, what language identifies the symbols or recognize letters so forth important piece here is the syntax like in English language uh, we say I go that's a syntactically correct uh, but if I say a table go it may not be uh, it may be syntactically correct but but it doesn't its meaning is wrong or say for example I goes that's a syntactically wrong that doesn't follow grammatical rule in the same way syntax is uh, is what specifies the structure of the program or symbolic representation uh, say for example in this example charb that means we are declaring a variable b of type character int a means we are declaring a variable a of type integer and is specifying its initial value then and then we are executing um, this statement result equal to a plus b um, assuming that the result type is defined earlier then this expression would be syntactically correct but its semantic may not be now say for example if we say here int b this there is a syntax error so there is a semicolon missing and also i is capitalized now the second important piece of of a language is semantics semantics has to do uh, what does a particular uh, step or um, sentence means for example think about these two sentences the ink is in pen and the cat is in pen of course ink is in pen is syntactically right and it does mean something so the semantics are right too now here the cat is in pen syntactically it's right but semantically is wrong how a cat can be in the pen same way in programming languages for example uh, like I said earlier uh, take this expression charb equal to cat b and then this result equal to a plus b so there is a semantically wrong you are trying to add a integer type variable with a corrected type variable which may not be the intention but compiler wouldn't know because internally compiler will take corrector b's ascii value and uh, will take then convert it to decimal value and then will add so syntactically you won't see any error message compiler is producing or any warning messages it may produce warning messages but you may overlook it usually it happens so um, the result would be wrong and that's a potential bug here so two important piece syntax and semantics syntactically errors uh, usually are caught by compiler if you are using uh, a good compiler 
it will throw a bunch of uh, error warning messages um, and will help you to figure it out where is the error, syntax error. Now semantically errors are very difficult to identify. Usually those are identified by a programmer. For example, infinite loop. For a, suppose you forgot to um, properly end the while loop and it's running um, in an infinite loop. So compiler wouldn't know it's only you or a programmer would be able to catch. Uh, some smart compilers may give some warning that okay this sounds like an infinite loop but it's just a warning so you know but not every time. Now let's see this is a very interesting slide uh, I prepared. So here I'm trying to to present uh, or trying to say what are different level of abstraction I mean here uh, say uh, on a broader level a software architecture can be defined or usually is defined in a form of unified modeling languages where the the attention is to focus on different entities how they are interacting for example here a person can have multiple credit cards so this is represented by one is to many relationship between an type person and type credit card. So this is a uh, one can implement via class uh, type and this is also class type and then can have relationship uh, between these two entities. Now this is a example of a broader level software architecture. Then these software architecture um, descriptions are then converted into the algorithm. Uh, for example, we can implement a function and what the function will do and how the different tasks uh, are done in a function. So we need to write an algorithm. So are typically depicted in algorithm and then those algorithms are being translated in a program where a programmer uh, does the programming job or write a computer program and then there is the compiler or that computer program written in any programming language is being compiled or interpreted depends what kind of language are you using for example if you are using C C++ it is a compiler or if you are using Perl it's an interpreter there is a little difference between compiler and interpreter a compiler takes the whole code and generates a machine code. An interpreter takes one line by one line and uh, then executes it. Um, so there are advantages, disadvantages uh, for which one to use but important concept here is that the high level program is being translated into a machine code and that machine code can be happily read by computer understand, and computer can understand machine code and do what you say it to do. Isn't it very fascinating how we can represent the same information in different levels and that information is being then computed by computer. Isn't it fascinating? I hope you have enjoyed it. Do not forget to subscribe the Professor YouTube channel. If you need private tuitions or private lessons, you may contact me at hr at libprofessor.org. And uh, thank you for subscribing the Professor YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day.